We have our insiders, Dave Wilson, Antoine Seawright. What does this mean, Antoine, as far as um, the nation as a whole? The president saying that he was going to take this and run with it now across the nation. Well, there's been lots of discussions and chit chatter in the political circles about the president standing with black voters. I think this will send a signal uh, to the rest of the primary process starting in Nevada on Tuesday, which will be a chemical mix of Latino voters, AAPI voters, and African American voters. I think this will send a, a bat signal to Nevada about where the president's standing truly is. As I always say, the elections give us a chance to really take stock irregardless of what the polls indicate. And so the polls, once again, have been proven wrong, and Joe Biden is taking the licking and keep on ticking. You have a, an opportunity right now for President Biden. As we talked about earlier, Jr. the moving of the South Carolina primary to be the first in the nation is a strong signal, I think, from the White House, the Democratic Party, to say how important the African-American vote actually is. When you look at that, it sends a clear signal about the direction that they're going to want to go with the rest of the campaign, as opposed to the brawl that is continuing to happen over on the Republican side, where we'll actually be back here in three weeks to talk about that between Donald Trump and Nikki Haley. But I will mm -hmm. say, I think this gives the president a clearer window of opportunity to lean in about Trumpism and Trump because both of them, one one or the other, or both, will be on the ballot. So look for him to make even stronger contrast between he and the former president and the Republican Party as we go forward into this process. And that's going to be the interesting part that we begin to see as it plays itself out, Jr. over the next few weeks, when you have Nikki Haley and Donald Trump going up against each other, head-to-head, -head, in Nikki Haley's own backyard, where a majority of the elected officials in the state of South Carolina aren't supporting Nikki Haley. They're behind Donald Trump. And we have seen more and more. Uh, Nancy Mace came on board just recently. You had other ones that were on the fence before that are now coming out. And it is a statement about where the Republican Party is at the moment. But I was in Washington last week and you're beginning to see there's going to be a shift that starts taking place over the next four and eight years mm -hmm. as the aging leadership of the country gets replaced by a new generation, which is what Nikki Haley, I think, is ultimately hoping to lay the groundwork for. She keeps saying it. She said it on the CBS Morning News earlier this week, you know, two 80-year-old men who are running for president. We need a next generation. But Antoine, if Democrats want to change who South Carolina votes for in November, how do they go about doing that? I think we have to duplicate part of what we did today. I think we have to keep investing in South Carolina. I think we have to keep making the contrast. And I think we have to start winning local elections. You don't build a house from the top down. You build it from the bottom up. And so part of that is local races, whether it's dog catcher, whether it's mayor. Uh, you keep building up. And then from there, you eventually change the tide and you change the tune. It, I would be very curious to see how this primary plays out on the Republican side and how many people not show up because that'll be a true indication of how frustrated South Carolina Republicans are with either one of the choices they have on the ballot. I think the interesting thing is going to be where you have flip over voters. Once we get past everything and you can start analyzing the data, those who tend to vote Democratic, deciding I'm not going to vote in this one. The president's got it in the bag. Let's figure out maybe I can go and sway what happens in the other election because it was independence and and more conservative Democrats that Nikki Haley was going the after in New Hampshire. Uh, she was doing it in Iowa. And that's a, a try of pulling the Republican Party a little bit more to the center that right now I think is Nikki Haley's only chance of really getting some groundwork going in. Keep in mind, we've had more than a million people move into South Carolina since Nikki Haley left as governor seven years ago. That's a huge change in population. It's a population shift. And when you look at that, you're beginning to recognize you've got people who did not live in South Carolina with Nikki Haley as their governor. That's a big thing where she is now having to go and reintroduce herself, where the president, as we said earlier today, as, as Antoine has liked to say all, all the time, he is a, an adopted son a of native, the a native, honorary a native, native son, son of South, of South Carolina. Carolina. Exactly. But do Republicans... Are they really concerned that something's going to change the tie between now mm -hmm. no, and, and November? Not, not in South Carolina. South Carolina's Republican voters versus Democrats, almost a 60-40 split, maybe, maybe two, to, two to one. And in that particular case, you can pretty much guarantee South Carolina is going to be a red state by the time we get to election day. And it really only boils down to about seven, eight states in America that are your swing states, your flip states. But, but I caution you on saying that because that is true for the presidential race. Right. However, 
we all know the importance of down ball ballot races, whether it's governor, U.S. Senate, whether it's county council person, sheriff, all those races will be on the ballot all across the country. So while the presidential may be shaped by several states, every state will have down ballot races that participation is crucial. And what happens so often in the elections is we see this drop off. But to the point about South Carolina Republicans, here's what I see happening. They realize the party has shifted to be more extreme or to, to cater and play footsie to Trump. I don't see the party going backwards. That's why Haley interesting trying to plant a flag for the future and seeing all these other lawmakers at the state level and local level coming out for Trump. I think she's out of touch with what is happening in South Carolina. I think, well, I, I, I tend to disagree slightly on that one. And the reason that I do is this, is that you tend to go and to the whatever direction the magnets are pulling at the moment. And the MAGA magnet is pulling a little bit stronger right now. When Trump is eventually not in the picture, I think you're going to see a bit of a recentering of the Republican Party down the road. But you all said that when the Tea Party movement started in 2010. They said, oh, this is just a short-term thing. We're going <laughs> to shift back to the center, and the party's gotten more extreme. You never go this way and go back that way. All right, we want to go back inside our studio now. Darcy is standing by with a look at some updated numbers.